What I want to talk about today, uh, over the last couple of years, I've gone on what came to be known as the Potter Listening Tour. It's kind of a riff on uh, Hillary Clinton's listening tours, which uh, were going on in Iowa when I first went on this thing in neighboring Missouri. Um, and when I went on those tours, uh, Facebook was something that came up uh, pretty regularly. And I want to talk to you about a couple of the tour stops where uh, Facebook uh, figured prominently in what I learned. Uh, but first, I want to flash back all the way to the original Potter Conference in October 2011, uh, where we had fabulous cocktail parties, <laughs> like this one. Uh, and uh, I met a woman uh, named Sue Ann Jones, who is still editor of the Ozark County Times. And we got to talking, and I asked her, uh, uh, how much broadband internet penetration was in her county of a few thousand souls. And she said probably only one in six of the people who read her paper actually had access to broadband internet. And I said, well, you know, maybe you don't really need what the uh, Potter Conference is, is offering, so I'm, I'm glad you're here. And she said, no, that's not true. Actually, a local the previous summer had put up a Facebook page for uh, yard sales that had stolen a chunk of her yard sale classified ads. So I was confused. I mean, well, how did they do it without access to the Internet? And so she pulled out one of these. Yeah, and that was how they did it. They did it all on a mobile phone. So that was what first alerted me that Facebook was going to be kind of a significant player, uh, even with community papers uh, nestled in the Ozarks. Uh, there have been a variety of reactions to uh, Facebook, uh, and I'm going to sort of give you a range. Uh, that is Jerry Lynn Voss, 70 years old, longtime editor of my favorite newspaper name, The Unterrified Democrat of Lynn, Missouri. Neil Johnson's her editor there. They have no digital presence at all. They did two years ago, and when I talked to her last uh, earlier this week, they still don't. I mean, Jerry's uh, operating uh, motto is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, in fact, if you'll look <clears throat> on this picture to her left, you'll notice there's a digital uh, phone, but there's also a rotary dial phone. Okay, all incoming calls are on the rotary dial phone. Uh, Jerry just says, well, nobody knows the difference. Uh, the touchstone phone is only there because occasionally Jerry is forced to uh, touch one, you know, for English or what have you. Um, similarly, she told me this week that she's had to upgrade her uh, PageMaker uh, software and some of her computers in order to be more compatible with a new uh, printer for her paper. So uh, Jerry basically upgrades when she has to. Uh, on the other hand, though, uh, two years ago, she told me about a story that was pretty important in uh, Osage County, where a prominent person had been killed in a motorcycle accident. Jerry first heard about it when a gal and her, uh, one of her composition people came up and said, Jerry, if you heard about this, Jerry said, no, where did you hear about it? Facebook. Uh, and Jerry says she's been continuing to kind of get scooped that way on Facebook, but still, you know, she doesn't feel like it's broken yet, so she's not gonna fix it. Um, but we'll continue to talk with Jerry, and I'm going to talk a little bit later about a project that we par partnered with uh, Missouri Press Association on to help folks like Jerry uh, build web pages when they're ready. Uh, that's Daryl Wilkinson and his wife Liz, uh, who are at the Gallatin paper. And Daryl is kind of the opposite of Jerry in that uh, he started playing around with computers more than 30 years ago. And that led to a spinoff from his weekly paper uh, in which it's a combination of digital and print that uh, produces uh, shoppers that distribute all over northern Missouri and in Iowa. And that's his biggest money maker. He, uh, Daryl says that he, he does that so he can afford to put out his paper, which is his true love. 
same way <clears throat> as uh, Jerry and the other folks I talked to, uh, he had uh, cases where Facebook got news before he did. And in fact, a local group even started a Facebook page that was pretended to be a competing newspaper on Facebook called the Gallatin Grapevine. Uh, Daryl told me last week when I called for an update that that effort has kind of petered out because it really had more to do with local politics than it did with uh, news gathering or revenue. Daryl's approach is kind of interesting. He uses Facebook when news uh, pops up there first as kind of a tip sheet. Uh, he goes out and they either verify the story and then find more details and run that in their paper. Or, you know, if they find out it, it isn't true, it's fake news, they debunk it. So it actually creates news stories for their print edition. Now, the 14, 15 papers I've visited over the last two years generally fall into this kind of paper that Norman Rockwell first immortalized more than 70 years ago in Paris, Missouri, with a series of paintings he did of what uh, small town newspapers look like, who are still doing business in a lot of ways <laughs> the way they did there. Uh, in fact, Missouri Press Association did a survey uh, recently in which they found that 47 of their members had no digital presence at all, and another 27 had a website, but no way to run ads or monetize it. That led to what we call the weekly newspaper website project, or because we have to have acronyms for everything, uh, WNWP, uh, in which the Potter Fund and RJI partner with MPA to give discounted uh, uh, working with Amplified Digital in St. Louis, provide discounted web pages and other uh, digital uh, media that we build for them and help them learn how to do. Uh, last week, I called up our first three buyers and asked them how things were going. Schuler County Times, uh, Talk with uh, Herb Austin, and he uh, his webpage is up, SchulerCountyTimes.com, all one word, uh, and it start, it, he's starting to add things to it. He doesn't uh, have ads as yet, but it's coming along. Um, I asked him uh, how he came to decide to uh, go with us. And actually, Herb had had a websites before, uh, but he wasn't satisfied with what they were doing. But he felt like that uh, something that MPA stands behind would be a website provider that uh, he could rely on. And uh, we're proud to, uh, to support something that people feel like they can rely on. Cheriton County Journal, another small paper, this one in mid-mo. Um, Th these folks, uh, what they were, uh, their motivation was uh, that the competing paper in their area has a website, and they felt like they they had to uh, keep up. So they came to uh, Missouri Press and asked for help. Um, they're just getting started with their effort, but they also, but they uh, do have a Facebook page, and uh, I asked uh, their publisher Susan who uh, said, well, you know, people just sort of expect us to have it, although she didn't like it very much. Uh, she tends to be on the unterrified Democrat side of things. But she's going to try new things. Um, finally, there's the call newspapers of St. Louis, which actually have a number of mastheads in South St. Louis County. And what's interesting to me about them, they've had their own website since 2003. Uh, but they decided to go with uh, WNWP uh, because uh, we were at Amplified Digital was able to offer them more features. And of course, the discounted price was also attractive, but they were particularly interested in uh, mobile. And <clears throat> they um, feel they actually are already uh, in Twitter and Instagram, and they use all their social media uh, to try to drive uh, more business to their website so they can monetize it, and also just simply to get more exposure to the paper. Um, going back to the, the original uh, contact I had, Sue Ann Jones, Ozark County, uh, 
You know, I, I asked her if she still sort of felt like uh, that she was frenemies with Facebook. And she said, well, you know, now I think we're probably more friends than enemies as they find ways to drive business to their own web page using social media. Uh, I think I've got a couple of minutes for questions if anybody wants to ask one. I was clear. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Oh, wait. So you've given us three examples. Are there others underway or completed? Are you talking about the weekly newspaper the website, website, right? Yeah, the website. Uh, it's three so far. We've just gotten started in the past couple of months. Okay, great. Uh, Mark's going to become a news user, uh, who's our part, partner and whose idea of the website project was originally. He's the father of WNWP. Uh, <laughs> we'll be coming on to tell you not only about that, but about the uh, digital toolbox that MPA is uh, creating, which was part of a RJI Fellows project. <clears throat> that sounds great. All right, thank you. Anybody else? All right. <laughs>